testing. Hello, my name is Joseph Kenerson, and I made a expense tracking app using React and Rails. Basically what my app does is it allows a user to track their spending by adding things they've purchased and adding money they've earned. And it keeps track of it in a list format. So let's see, go to my app real quick. So here's my expense report app. So there's three different kinds of fields to submit an expense. So let me just type in a date. I can say it was bought a basketball. The amount was $34. And post it right there. I can also do money I've earned. Um, do another date. Save a lot of. Oops. I made five hundred dollars. So yeah, it just posts it for you. Um, I would have liked to eventually made it so you can edit and delete things, and also keep track of how much you've spent and how much you've earned, and then compare the two to give you an actual amount. But that's something I could work on later. So I did, I learned React, show you some code, but before I do that, let me just kind of go through um, a quick little overview of some of the, some things in React. Um, React is a JavaScript framework um, in an MVC um, Basically, with MVC, it focuses mainly on the view. Um, React applications are built over two main principles, components and states. Um, one good thing about React is that it doesn't require any additional dependencies, making it uh, pluggable with virtually any other JavaScript library. Um, Yes, uh, JavaScript is or React is actually really fast. Um, instead of using, instead of traversing the DOM to manipulate objects, it creates its own virtual DOM. And the reason why React is so fast is because um, JavaScript objects are faster than DOM objects, and the React virtual DOM is a JavaScript object. Um, React never re never reads from the real DOM. Um, React only writes to the real DOM if it if it has to. Um, let's see what else. React um, effectively handles DOM updates and it renders functions. Um, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Uh, the render function. React will update the virtual DOM and only push the necessary files to the actual DOM. So that's just a few things right there. Um, let me kind of go through my code and explain some, some things I've learned. So in my JavaScript components folder, um, basically right here, um, actually let me start over here. So in my views folder, I attached this um, file that basically acts as a bridge between my Rails app and my React components I'm about to make. Um, it basically receives the name of the React component um, I want to render along with the data we want to pass to it. So that's kind of cool. It's basically a bridge uh, between the two. Um, so let me go back to what I was at earlier. So basically right here I created a records component. Um, basically with any component you make, it require, no matter what, it has to have a render method 
right here and um, the render method is in charge of rendering the component itself um, it should return an instance of the react component um, so up here um, right here is a git initial state method which basically um, it's a method that will generate the initial state of the component um, yeah it basically takes the data that I gave it and puts it to the records and that and once it shows all the records that's the initial state so that's what it will always refer to that um, let's see uh, this method right here get default props it will initialize um, our components properties um, in case we forget to send any data so just in case we forgot to send it data right here it will still show us um, basically this in general whether there's anything in it or not um, besides the render method react components rely on the use of properties to communicate with other components um, and the states to detect whether a re-render is required or not um, let's see so this add record method will take a new record as an argument and push it into the record function and then re and then once it does that um, push to the record function then once it sorry let me rephrase that so the or not rephrase let me just reset it um, so the method add record will take a new record as an argument and push it into the record function and then reset the add record form so you can add another thing um, the records table was created this records this right here is basically what creates the records table it um, Basically, right here, it creates um, a header row. It creates a header row right here, and which will, comes out to expense report. So the cool thing about React is you put your HTML and your JavaScript together, which I found pretty cool. Um, also the records um, the records table basically um, uh, inside the body uh, the body tags right here um, it creates a new record element for each existing record and shows that to the table itself so once that's set this other file this record dot jsx js dot jsx file um, this record component will display each individual record in a specific structure on the table. Um, so the date, the title, and the amount. And this function right here, the amount format, basically will take the number I give it and add a basically just a dollar sign to it. Because if you noticed before, I didn't put any dollar signs in it. Um, so that's the records JS and the record. So for the record form, um, let's see. So I created 
a new record form component. Um, the initial state of this, which is this thing right here, the form itself, the initial state is just empty, just by itself. Um, the handle change method, the handle change handler method will use the name attribute to detect which input is triggered um, or which input triggered the event and update the related state value in the form. So the handle change is used in all three places. So um, as I'm as somebody types, it constantly updates to determine what the values are. Um, yeah. um, this function right here, valid, was pretty cool. Um, figuring this out, uh, basically, um, in order for you to submit the form, the title, date, and amount all need to be present in order to submit. Um, this is actually shown right down here. So if none of those things are present, then the submit button is disabled. Um, also, the handle submit function uh, will prevent, it's basically like the Ajax call, it will prevent the form's HTTP submit and post a new record information, um, post a new record information to the current URL. Uh, for this, the callback is key. After the successful new record is posted, the state is restored to the initial value right here. Um, once that's set, um, it uses JSON and binds it to the value. Um, it also uses this handler new record um, oops, hold on a second. Oh, so uh, basically when this handle new record um, component, it sends back the data to the parent component. Um, so once it has the information from the submit, it handles that information and sends it back to, oops, Uh, sends it back um, right here, which is an add a new record, and then it handles it to put it back onto the list. And it does that using uh, JSON. Um, so for this form, um, I used, actually for both forms, I played around a little bit with Bootstrap. That's how I was able to get it kind of looking pretty, I guess you can say. Um, so yeah, this is the basics of my app. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's talk about. 
So basically the reason why I chose React was because um, I knew it was somewhat newer and I heard a lot of different companies were implementing it into their websites. And I mean, I knew Facebook, I found out Facebook was the creator of it. So um, I thought that was kind of cool. Curious to see what they're able to do. Um, I definitely wanted to work more with JavaScript to get better at it. And by learning React, I definitely feel much more confident with my JavaScript. Um, while I was learning this, I went through a couple tutorials. Um, one tutorial kind of walked me through the initial setup of how to use React with Rails. And they did most of the tutorial in CoffeeScript. And I've never used CoffeeScript. So that was kind of interesting trying to read through that and kind of find ways to convert it back to uh, actual JavaScript. So that was definitely a challenge. Um, I'm glad I was kind of over, I was able to overcome those. Um, I would definitely use React again if I could. Um, or de I mean, I definitely know I will in the future. Um, yeah, this definitely helped me with my Rails also because we only had so much time with Rails. And yeah, kind of using more JavaScript, Rails, and then learning React kind of all together really just, I definitely learned a lot in this considering I was only doing it for a little over two days. So yeah, this is my project. It's what I learned. I hope you enjoyed my first ever screencast and please don't make fun of me later <laughs> just kidding all right see you tomorrow